Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Epic, bright and early. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started now. So my name is Chris Kansko. I'm here with my friend Elizabeth Cowley. We're going to be your co-hosts in this auditorium for today. Um, our schedule is rather tight, so we are going to ask that you please hold questions. We are not going to be able to have time to do that today. So um, we are just going to go ahead and start with our speakers. Our first presenters this morning are the co-founders of Gas Free Seneca, a group in opposition to storage of LPG and natural gas in the salt caverns near Seneca Lake. They are Yvonne Taylor and Joseph Campbell. Good morning. Thanks for getting up early and coming out on a rainy Saturday. Um, I, I don't know how many of you here do know uh, that even if they miraculously ban hydrofracking in New York State or extend a moratorium, that we will, regardless of that, uh, be the gas storage and transportation hub for natural gas and liquefied petroleum gas uh, right here in the Finger Lakes. Uh, the facility that they're planning on building could be the largest in the northeastern United States and with the planned expansion it could be the largest in the world right here in the Finger Lakes. So um, Joseph Campbell is going to give you a few details about the project and then I'll wrap it up. Yes I do. Uh, Energy LP is a company that's based in um, uh, Kansas City, Missouri. They've been quietly buying up um, gas storage assets in the Finger Lakes region since about 2005. In 2008, they bought the uh, um, U.S. salt plant over just north of Watkins Glen on the west side of Seneca Lake. And uh, they've, um, they've initially proposed to store about 2.1 million barrels, which is about uh, a little over 88 million gallons of LP gas in the salt caverns, these depleted salt caverns. Um, what they do is they, they, they pump um, the LP into the salt caverns and as they pump the LP, uh, the liquefied petroleum gas, into the salt caverns, uh, this brine comes out, okay? The brine's there, it's about uh, 12 times saltier than seawater. It's very, very salty stuff and uh, they're gonna store it in a 14 acre pond, an open air impoundment. Uh, right there on the property. Um, 14 acres is pretty big. It's actually a, 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 that's the inside dimension of this pond. It holds about 100 million gallons of the salty water and is situated on the steep slope over Seneca Lake. Uh, these are uh, some of uh, the concerns, obviously, that uh, that salt water um, that close to the lake, if something happens to that impoundment, um, that, that salt water is going to rush right down into Seneca Lake. Seneca Lake is a class 2A drinking water source for over 100,000 people. Uh, Dr. Hillary Lambert is uh, the Kugel uh, watershed, uh, the steward of the Kugel watershed and uh, network and um, she has a real problem with this, this brine pond as well. And uh, some of the uh, supporting infrastructure, um, there's a railroad track that goes right by there. They want to bring this uh, stuff in by train. Um, so they're going to have uh, to build this uh, siding, six track siding capable of loading and unloading 24 rail cars every 12 hours. And a truck depot that's uh, going to um, be capable of loading and unloading four trucks um, every hour. Um, they're capable of running 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now four trucks per hour doesn't sound like a lot. But um, we, did the, we did the math, and uh, based on their, their figures, um, that equates to a, a round trip, so eight trucks every, uh, every hour. And um, if you extrapolate that out, uh, the cumulative impact is going to be about 70,000 trucks per year. If anybody knows anything about Watkins Glen, you know that there's a two-lane road that goes through there with traffic lights, and there's a, a, a major intersection. And even on a, a, a slow day in the summertime, it's almost impossible to get through that town. Um, and uh, of course, they have to have these compressors, seven, uh, four 700 horsepower compressors to move this stuff in and out. 
Um, I just saw the, uh, the flare over at the, uh, the TEPCO LPG facility for the first time the other day, and um, they want to have a, a 60 foot flare stack that's going to be burning off the propane that comes out with the brine every time they exchange the stuff. Um, Energy's plans for this area are huge. Um, Yvonne talked about it uh, briefly. 53 billion cubic feet of natural gas storage in the Finger Lakes region. They already own um, about 40 billion cubic feet. They just bought the, um, or they're in the process of buying um, 2 billion cubic feet of natural gas storage that's there now on the U.S. salt plant. Um, they want to expand that to 10 billion cubic feet. This is all interconnected uh, by pipelines, and uh, we really are going to be the gas storage and transportation hub for the northeastern United States if they get their way. It says right there. <laughs> Uh, this, is, this is a quote uh, from Energy. They want to make the Finger Lakes the, net, net, uh, the gas storage and transportation hub for the Northeast. Um, and there's, this is from their website, and you can see all the assets, and you can see that little, uh, that little droplet. That's Watkins Glen. We're at the epicenter of this. Uh, this is a nice map that was drawn up by Karen Edelstein for uh, Frack Tracker, University of Pittsburgh um, maps, um, gas wells and uh, storage and salt caverns. And all of those little green things right there where it says 14A and 14, those are all depleted uh, salt uh, caverns on the U.S. salt plant site. There's over 62 of these things, okay? Their initial plans only call for using two, okay? Um, that means that the, 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 the future storage capacity is already there. They can expand this exponentially with very little effort. So what are our concerns? Um, Obviously explosions, you know, um, the catastrophic failure of the brine pond. Um, salt cavern storage is considered um, the most um, dangerous way to store this stuff. Uh, all, of the, all of the catastrophic failures in the past uh, 30 years or so have, have happened in salt cavern storage. As I think it's the corrosive nature of the brine. You know, this stuff is very corrosive. Valves fail, pipes fail. And uh, this is uh, a little thing that was drawn up by uh, Dr. Charles Sorensen, who's a, a PhD chemical engineer. And he talks about this, the, the nature of LP gas is that it's heavier than air. So if this stuff does release accidentally, what's going to happen is it's going to flow down the hill and into this bowl that, that's formed by the, the hills and the, and the lake. And depending on the prevailing winds, it could go north or south. If it goes south, it's going to go right into Watkins Glen. Somebody's out there in their boat, you know, and they decide to light a cigarette, kaboom. <laughs> and that's what it looks like when it goes kaboom. Uh, this was actually taken um, in 2008. There was a, a catastrophic failure at a, an LP storage facility up near Toronto, Canada. This picture was taken from eight kilometers away, which is about five miles. It looks like an atomic bomb. You should see the video. And um, energy isn't without, um, you know, they, they talk about their stellar safety record, but um, they had an accident at their bath facility too, some, uh, a, an accidental release of the stuff ignited and, and sent some people to the hospital with some pretty severe burns. So there's noise pollution, light pollution from the lights, um, VOCs from the truck traffic, uh, grapes are particularly vulnerable to this stuff. I'm going to move right along because we're running out of time already. Uh, they, they say that, the, that this is going to lower the price of LP gas around here, but that's, that's, a, that's a, a, a misnomer. LP gas is market driven. You know, spot markets determine the price of this stuff, not where it's stored. <laughs> and energy itself um, has been um, under investigation in four or five states. Um, their subsidiaries have been uh, accused of price gouging the price of LP gas uh, to residential and, and commercial users. They were charging as much as 439 per gallon of this stuff back in, when was this, 2008, when the, the, the market price was about $2.39 a gallon. And they talk about making, um, you know, improving the local economy and, and uh, creating jobs. Well, we know better. This is uh, Dr. An or, uh, Dr. Canada, Andrew Rumbach, 
supply us with these statistics, and, and tourism is the, the real engine that drives the, the local economy. I'm going to bring uh, Yvonne Taylor up, and she's going to speak for a few minutes. Thank you. for our area, for the Finger Lakes. Uh, Dr. Anthony Agrafia has likened this region to our Yosemite, our Yellowstone. And I happen to agree with him because I've spent all of my life here, as has many of my family. This is a picture of my grandfather when he first came and, and spent some time on our property on the east side of Seneca Lake. He and my grandmother raised their three daughters on that shoreline. Our family has fished these waters, fallen in love, grown old, started new families, and when hard times fell, we came to the woods at Seneca Lake in search of peace. This is me on one of my earlier boat rides. <laughs> I learned to swim in Seneca's pure waters before I learned to walk. My mother always told me that Seneca Lake had healing powers. My mother and father owned a hotel or a motel uh, which is now called the Anchor Inn on the west side of Seneca Lake. And when I went over there to help, I would meet people from all over the world who would tell me that the Finger Lakes region was one of the most beautiful places they'd ever seen. <coughs> Whoop, wrong way. <laughs> yep, this is me 20 years and 20 pounds ago when I drove the pace car for the racetrack. My mother also worked on the race weekends. I was planning to build my permanent home on our property that's been in my family for generations when I learned about this facility that's planned directly across the lake from me. So I decided we looked to look into it, and here we are today telling you about it because of how alarmed we grew the more we learned. They're already putting the pipelines in place, they are ready to roll. If this is what's in store for our region, it's going to permanently change our home. To me, this is what the Finger Lakes is all about. Racing, wineries, the beautiful tourist destination, not the gas storage and transportation hub for the Northeastern United States. <laughs> This is our jewel. This is our treasure. This is our Finger Lakes, our Finger Lakes. I'm a school teacher, and I often read the book, Port and Here's a Who, to my kids. I brought it here today because I can't help but draw some parallels between this book and what's happening to us here. Energy is like the evil jungle animals who want to take the entire universe, which exists on a tiny dust speck, and boil it in a pot of beeselnut oil. Horton the elephant is the only one who's hearing the pleas from those voices on that tiny dust speck. We are about to be boiled unless we start making more noise. The mayor in the story of Whoville rushes through the town searching for anyone who's not doing their part, who's not making any noise and he finds one shirker. <laughs> this, cried the mayor, 
is your town's darkest hour, the time for all whose who have blood that is red to come to the aid of his country, he said. We've got to make noise in greater amounts, so open your mouth, lad, for every voice counts. So this is your call to action. This little presentation is not gonna stop this project. Adding your voice and spreading the word is the only way. If we are to protect this region and preserve it and prevent it from becoming an industrial wasteland, you need to speak up now. Because what will our children say if we don't prevent this from happening. How can we allow this to happen? Please don't be a shirker. <laughs> Get involved, spread the word, sign our petition. We've hired an attorney. We need lots of money. So please make donations if you're able. Thank you very much. <laughs>